and Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends sharing who they were afraid of back in their playing days. But before we dive into today's episode, let me ask you guys, could you please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content? All right, enough said. Let's get right into it. Now the first player that we're going to take a look at and who openly admits who he was afraid of is Dominique, the human highlight film, Wilkins. Let's have a look. And I've never feared anybody ever played against us. The one guy that scared me, and that was Bernard King. Mm. You could not <laughs> guard him yeah. on the block. Mm. It was just impossible because he would turn and sh turn to his right shoulder when he would shoot. He never extended. He stopped here. So you couldn't block his shot. You look up, up under. Get a quick he's got release, 40. Right? Oh, it was. And the thing about Bernard, they used to tell us, you got to meet Bernard at half court. And I'm like, I'm not meeting him at half court. <laughs> right. Well, I found out real quick what they meant because I was, he was gone, you know. So I had to start to meet him at half court but because once he got ahead of steam at half court, it was too You know, late. there were guys that you had to really get up to play against. All the offensive rebounds, like Moses Malone and those guys, you just knew you were in for a dog fight, but you weren't even scared of them. Like Lonnie Shelton. Was the one guy like oh, they yeah. said, Lonnie Shelton? Supposedly, I don't know if this story is true or not, but I'll tell it again. <laughs> yeah. Some guy tried to stick him up. He took the dude's gun from the guy, beat him with his own gun, <laughs> and then every time the guy moved, he hit him on the head till the cops came. The cops came, and the robber ran to the cops like, "You gotta save me from this guy." I was like, "I do not want to nothing to do with Lonnie Shelton." Oh, <laughs> now the next clip is with Isaiah Thomas, and it's about a player that some of you probably never even heard of, but who was a real icon back in the. 1980s. Let's have a look. Isaiah Thomas to this day tells me that the one guy he was scared of was Richardson. He said Richardson owned him. Well, he was the sugar man. You know, he, he was Sugar Ray. I mean, he was sweet. You know, no moment or no stage was too big for him. Michael Ray in the backcourt. Three seconds. Two. Michael Ray puts it up. It'll count if it goes. It does! A three-point play! And it's all over! I used to like playing against little guards. Because I say it's like shooting over a chair. I used to say, oh, I, I'm going to get all my jumpers off today. Oh, oh. And, this, and, and he was a good player, but Dana Barros. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just got rolling for some reason when he saw my face. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I'm mean rolling. So he had his career high. He had 50 points against, against us. Uh, he used to, we, we, we were up like 17, 18. Us or me. Uh, no, on me. No, wait. <laughs> but no. Just 48 on the <laughs> No, wait. The best part about it. No, uh, uh, the best part about it is when Sam Cassell came to the team. He didn't know I had trouble with Dana Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so, first two or three plays, he get it rolling. Boom, boom. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get these two fouls. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not coming in. So then, foul Sam, so soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, foul shaving. For, we up. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not getting the business. So, so, then all of a sudden, he gets, he's still hot. He hits like three or four more. Boom. So, Scram screaming on the bench. Why you get him rolling? Why you get him rolling? And I'm like, it's all you, baby. It's all you. So, at the end of the game, he had 50. So Sam's like, they they re, re, the only reporters, and he's like, well, Kenny had 21 and I had 25. So we basically have 52. So it's, it's even, it's a wash. Now the next clip that we're going to take a look at is from Chauncey Billups talking about Allen Iverson. And I'm pretty sure he was not the only one who was afraid of AI. Let's take a look. Knowing that it's going to be an uphill battle. You know, I always had a tough time with little, really fast guys. <laughs> and as you can see right there, he got by me pretty easy. Bubble yeah. Chuck! But yeah. um, he was just he was just fearless. Oh, you know, he was fearless. I mean, he, he never let up. I mean, he was a warrior. Um, you couldn't bully him. I could bully a lot of guys. You couldn't bully him. I mean, AI was my guy for sure. I'm going to say for me, this happened in my first few years in the league, I'm going to say Vince Carter. You know, every oh. week I see... 
highlights, just highlights of him dunking on guys. And I was just like, man, I do not want to be on these highlights. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, this was every, this was like three or four times a week. And so, you know, when Vince came in, and this is when you had great perimeter. This is before LeBron came into the league, before Melo, these guys who are also great one-on-one. -on -one. But it was Vince Carter for me in the Eastern Conference because it was just it's like, I didn't put you on that ISO wing. And next thing you know, one dribble, he's up in the air, and I never want to be on that highlight tape. Well, unfortunately for me, I was playing in the 98 playoffs against Michael Air Jeffrey Jordan. So he has <laughs> to be a part of this conversation. And clearly, I was present when Kobe Bryant scored 81 points. So I that should about probably that. be my answer. <laughs> <laughs> How about more. that? <laughs> hey, fight over the pick and roll, man. Come on. Well, can I get some help? <laughs> Do you know what's sad about this uh, highlight stuff? Help, man. Is that every time we show oh any of this God. B roll, it's a different play because that's how many times he was up there. But here's what I want to for real stress. That's good D, though. Like, he wasn't <laughs> thumping his chest or talking any trash because you don't get close to 81 if you start running your mouth. And so, like, he was just out there physically dominant like a man amongst boys, and we had to take it. And the next clips that we're going to take a look at are NBA players admitting that they were afraid of MJ. Let's take a look. Steve, what was that first year like? You're playing for, for Cotton? For right. Cotton Fitzsimmons. Yeah. You know, my experience was totally different than these guys because I was a, you know, late second-round pick. I didn't know if I was going to make the league. I was on a non-guaranteed contract. And I'll never forget one of my first exhibition games we played the Bulls. And I was just trying to make the roster. And Michael Jordan gets the ball right in front of our bench. And I'm already scared to death. Like, God, I hope I don't get into this game. I'm, I'm not ready for this stuff. And he holds the ball out. He holds the ball out and he looks right at me. And I'm on the bench just kind of like, he holds the ball out and he goes, watch this. And he turns, he went right around Dan Marley, bam, dunks it, looks back at our bench and just starts laughing. And I'm looking like, there's no way in hell I can ever make this. <laughs> now I really don't want to. I thought, I, I, thought he looked, wow. I thought he looked at you and said, 10 years from now, I'm going to throw this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the statute of limitations up. I was terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. You just got MJ? Yeah. You gave For how long? For how long? Right when you took the floor? Oh, or? the whole game. <laughs> the one guy who gave me business every single time, and I hate him to this day, is Popeye Jones. You hate him to this day? Oh, God. I, you know, this guy... I could not stop this guy. And why was that? I have no idea. It's like, and first of all, I, you know, you ask Isaiah why Steve Coulter's killing him. You call why Big Country's killing him. Like, I can't even explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wish I could. This guy's killing me. The most intimidating player I ever faced, had to face, was Kobe on his last year. Kobe Bryant, just by his, his aura, when you play defense, you, you do it, but you know that this is something to play defense on that kind of guy. Kobe, hard to believe. Are you kidding me? Unreal. Are you kidding me? Kobe was the uh, best competitor I ever played against. You wanted to not say nothing to him to keep him, keep him calm. I would say the most intimidating player you know I ever faced was as a rookie, KG. Probably Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. KG. Look out! Here he comes. Double clutch. Slam! Slam! Yeah. That was always a guy that I looked up to as a little kid. You know, coming up, he was one of my favorite players. His intensity, his aggressiveness. He's really tough, he's really strong, he really wants to play hard. He would talk trash the whole game and mess with you, you know, uh, so it was tough playing against him. Didn't really appreciate the things he said to me, but it was uh, kind of what I expected after watching him so long, um, so it was a pretty special moment for me. The most intimidating player in my career that I've seen was Tim Duncan because of his intelligence, because of his talent, and because of his ability to play this game right way. For me, the most intimidating player that I face is probably Tony Parker. Parker on a sprint! Yeah. Oh, my goodness! I just married my rookie year. He just kept going at me every single possession. And he would not stop. And, you know, I see why he was one of the best point guards at that time. The most intimidating player Patrick Beverly. He gets into the ball, he gets into you, he's talking all the time. That's how he makes his game. You know, it's kind of unfortunate I spent countless hours trying to find the right material, find the right clips, and I could not find a clip of a player that many NBA players were afraid of, Alvin Robertson. I talked to many guys on my podcast, and they all off the record obviously, told me that they were afraid of Alvin Robertson because he was not only a dangerous player on the basketball court, but also a dangerous player or dangerous person off the court.
Anyway, that was it for today's episode, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.